in spite of the power of that urge to merge and the power of resonance and netza, the vitality of that ability and need to resonate, it can only go so far. Because <clears throat> the sentient self is intimately aware of its own uniqueness. Its expression is of its own unique nature, its own unique combination of essential meanings in that particular ratio. That's what it is expressing. And as it merges, part of merging is a loss of self. It can be an expansion of self, but it is also a loss of self, and that can only go so far. So we have, in balance of that great power of resonance, we have dissonance. That is, uh, when the sentient self feels that it is straying too far from its own unique nature, because it must be true to its own unique nature, it experiences dissonance, which is basically saying, deciding that it has gone too far in its merging with other and must now reassert its uniqueness and be itself in light of this merging. So, it never says absolutely no to merging. It just puts limits on the merging because that urge to merge is always there. But so is this self-identification of its own uniqueness. This is hard. Dissonance to Netzach's residence. Okay? So, hard. Hod means splendor. Now, where that imagery enters in is in this experience of death, dissonance, there is choice. Hod represents our ability, the unique ability of the sentient self to choose, to choose to merge or choose not to merge, to choose how much to merge. That's the basic choice of existence at this point, to merge or not to merge. And in this choice, The universe is multiplied in its complexity an infinite number of times. When you insert the power to choose, to decide for oneself based upon one's own valuation of significance, remember, this is the realm of significance. So that power to choose is rooted in the recognition, perception, evaluation of significance. This changes everything. This adds the factor of choice into I mean, it just, everything explodes in options. It's an infinite explosion 
in the complexity of the cosmos at this point, <laughs> of consciousness. Because there are so there are an infinite number of avenues that any moment one can follow, okay? So that's the splendor. It's the splendor of the universe, this infinite jewel, just outstandingly complex and intricate. That is the view of the cosmos from the perspective of Hod. Splendor. Okay. <clears throat> Hod is really the nascent intellect. Now, the human intellect, I mean, again, this is all in human terms, um, although this all does correlate to every other thing, has its own Hod, its own ability to decide whether it merges or does not, whether it gives up parts of its uniqueness or preserves its uniqueness. Both are accommodated by everything, okay? But for humans, this is the beginning of the intellect. It continues its development with Malkuth and the paths that lead to Malkuth. But here it's born. And that is that part of the mind that decides, that labels, <clears throat> that thinks really in human terms of combining ideas, considering, you know, posing the question, etc. And all of that mentation is rooted in significance, in that sach, in that power to merge, in that power to resonate with other. That is the basis of the, the nascent intellect. It's all about significance. Okay? So, <clears throat> The paths that create, inform Hod, the first, just like with Netzach, comes from Kether. That's the hidden path, Kether to Hod. And again, it's the I. Manifesting in its entirety, in Hod, manifesting in its entirety as all of the sentient selves realizing that it has the power to decide for itself. It feel it fills all the sentient selves in that realization. It experiences that realization about itself through all of the sentient selves that exist, that make up the, the cosmos, okay? <clears throat> so it is the blessing of the I upon Hod, upon the intellect of the sentient self. The divine illumination, if you will, of the intellect that really informs us about the power of the intellect. Okay. The next path, the, the next <clears throat> emanation that informs Hod 
comes from Chokmah. And this is the Chokmah to Hod. This is just like the Bina to Netzach path, which was the greater self, you know, communicating with the sentient self. <clears throat> this is Chokmah, the source of essential meaning informing Hod, informing the intellect the human intellect. This manifests just like the connection with Bina and the, the greater self manifests as the conscience, that inner voice that tells us right from wrong, among other things. This connection with Hokma is knowing. Now, knowing is special, and it, it's not just the mundane sort of, I read it in a book, so I know it, or, you know, I did it a couple times, so I know it. It's not a knowing based on personal experience. It is an inner knowing. That just manifests, like the conscience, manifests on its own. It's clearly input from a higher level of self, just like the conscience, okay? So this knowing, uh, it's responsible for so much in the development, in the history of the human species. This power of knowing. Now, part of that knowing is our ability to perceive essential meaning. Because this is the same connection here. The power of knowing is that same connection as the perce direct perception of essential meaning. And really, it is this same path that we're following when we directly perceive essential meaning. And with essential meaning comes a knowing. And this is wisdom. In the human sense, it is wisdom. That just knowing what's right. You know, the right thing to do. The <laughs> yeah, knowing. Okay? And again, this path is one of those very special paths, very special hidden paths, that cross from one side pillar to the other side pillar. The first was that path from Bina to Netzach, and now from Chokmah to Chod. Crosses right over that Aleph Resh crossing. Now the number of crossings on the path of Aleph, this is the most crossings of any path in the tr whole tree of life. Let's see, there's two, there's 11 crossings of the path of Aleph. And, and three of those are at the Aleph Rush crossing, okay? <clears throat> So, this is very important. We'll come to that again in just a second. But, uh, so, the next path, uh, the next emanation into Hod, comes from Tiferet, the solitary self. That little reflection of the eye that is unique to each of us, it is just totally unique in the universe. That little reflection of the eye shines down into the intellect and says, oh, this is who I am, reminds, reminds the uh, sentient self that it is a reflection 
of the eye that it is its own little unique glorious reflection of the eye that has the power to choose the power to create future possibilities through choice choosing is Ooh, one of the most creative acts that a human does. <clears throat> okay. Now, <clears throat> the next emanation comes from Gibura. Remember Gibura? That's the point at which the solitary self realizes its own uniqueness in the power of that uniqueness. It understands the unique gift that only it can give to the universe, okay? That unique gift flows into the intellect, into hold, into that power to choose. It informs that power to choose through this path, which is the path of Pe and Mercury, the planet Mercury. Now, Pe means mouth. It's how we speak. It's how we communicate. And that's what this path is. It's communicating <clears throat> the power of that unique gift of self into Hod and the intellect. Okay? And it's Mercury. Mercury with wings on his feet. Mercury who communicates between the solitary self and the sentient self through the intellect, through the uniqueness of self. Okay? Now, the next path <clears throat> is the path of Oyin that goes from Yesod to Hod. <clears throat> oh, the path of Ayin. Now, Ayin means eye, that is an eyeball, or spring, as in water, you know, erupting from the earth, from Mother Earth. <clears throat> And <clears throat> its zodiacal sign is Capricorn. This is an Earth sign. Now, <clears throat> in Tarot, this is the devil. This is <clears throat> in the Sefer Yetzira. One of the attributes of Capricorn is laughter. So, this is, in Kabbalah, a universal force. The laughter, you know, the, the joyousness. This is what is happening here. This is what is communicated emanated here and it is the power to choose <laughs> in many ways it's the cosmic jokester the finger of the cosmic jokester you know <laughs> okay we're going to give you the power to choose <laughs> and you know <clears throat> yeah yeah this is like the cosmic joke. Okay, you have the power 
to choose. You have in this power the ability to create futures dependent upon your choice. Whatever choice, whichever option you choose, the universe responds. The universe accommodates your choice and modifies itself. It changes ever so slightly or greatly depending upon what you choose. Now, for humans, wow, I mean that part, part of the dysfunction in the human psyche, the human being, the modern man, woman, whatever, is that in the understanding that we have this power, the power of the individual, the unique power of the individual, combined with this power to choose, we have left out collective. We don't think how this fits in the collective, that that power is productive only in the context of the collective. We forgot that that is what blesses our power and makes it a positive, constructive thing for the whole of the cosmos, other than just our individual petty needs, wants and desires, because we have lost that consideration, we use that power to choose not for the good of the whole, but to um, turn away, turn away from the I, you know. We hardly have any awareness of the I within us, within everything. And because we have that power, we use that power to choose for our own little egotistical needs and wants and desires instead of what will benefit and nurture the whole, we are a destructive force. Okay. <clears throat> that happens here in this in Hod in our choice, in the choices we have made and make. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, this is our power to choose, Capricorn. And that power has consequence. That's what Capricorn is saying here that all of the choices we are empowered to make are creative choices. Now they can create negative, they can create destruction, they can create uh, uh, poison, uh, they can create death or they can create nurturing, positive, uh, wholesome, etc. Uh, but they have consequence and they will 
create. That is the nature of choice. Choice creates. Plain and simple. It is what makes it that splendor, that infinitely unpredictable yeah. <laughs> yeah, splendor of random choice, random choices. So it's random creativity. <laughs> it's really spectacular um, to um, look at, to experience. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> the final path to inform Hod is the path of Mem from Netzach to Hod. This is the mother path, the mother letter of water, okay? So it's the universal water, the water of life, really, because it's that continuum, as are all the mother letters, a continuum, it's that continuum between resonance and dissonance, between merging and maintaining one's unique individuality. Okay? And it's the essential, <clears throat> the essential continuum of existence is here in the temporal realm as incarnate human beings. We are always Moving between resonating and dissonance. Between resonance and dissonance. Resonance and dissonance. We open and we close. We open and we close. Community and solitude. Okay? Open and close. And it's a constant movement between these two Poles, basically. Okay, that is our existence with interacting with other, which is all of our existence is an interaction with other. Self and other. Self and other. Opening and closing. Self, other. Self and other. <laughs> other, we let in. And then we focus on self, self and other. And a healthy person, there is a balance. And it doesn't require abrupt movements on other, either end of this. It's just a fluid, continuous process. And there is rhythm here. Now, <clears throat> I was saying about the, the components of time being change, sequence, and duration. Now, we're talking now in the realm of duration because as we move back and forth, we do that... <clears throat> This really finalizes with Malkuth and the formation of Malkuth and the path of Tov, which crosses the path of Mem between Yesod and Malkuth. That's the path of the moon, which is about rhythm and time, the keeping of time. So this movement back and forth is actually happening in that context of time. So, and because of the nature of human perception and how we perceive, it's not a fluid movement for us perceptually. It's chunks of movement. It's little snapshots along the way. 
okay? And it takes time. Things happen between snapshots. And we notice that things have happened between snapshots. This is duration. Between snapshots, we see the slow progression of change. We actually see the slow progression of change. But change is literally infinite continuous. There is no pause. Okay? <clears throat> but that's how we perceive things. This progression, sequential progression of changes in that equals duration in this context of Toph, the moon. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is... <clears throat> Mem is also called the Garden of Eden, the Gar Gan Eden, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Because this is where life happens for us. This is an emotional, ah, dynamic exchange of energy, of this really fluid, always moving energy between Natsak and Hod, between resonating and dissonating. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to create a new word. Resonating, dissonating, back and forth. Always, in the end, maintaining our ability to be open to other and yet maintain our own unique, discrete awareness. We get to decide what those boundaries are. That's the great power of hope that we have. Now, <clears throat> used in context with the collective that we connect with here through Netzach and resonance, kept in that context, we can only resonate powerfully and purely when we maintain the discrete nature of our individual self. It's only as powerful, powerfully unique individuals that we can truly resonate with other and create a powerful merging of awarenesses, okay? Not only do we have the power to say, no, I'm going to close myself off and maintain my own discrete awareness as it is, not only do we have that power, also have the power to open ourselves consciously and intentionally. And that's just a little different than normal resonating. You know, <clears throat> when it becomes a conscious and intentional act, it can be very powerful merging of awareness. Okay? Just as when the closing of ourselves off becomes an intentional, conscious act. We can make so much better use <laughs> of our alone time. Keep that in mind. Okay. So that's, I think that's all for Hode for now. Um, next time will be Malkuth. So, till then, bye-bye.